So it's the 9th of April 2020. Welcome to Tilt. My name is Helen Myers and I welcome you on behalf of AWL London to another Tilt, that's Technology and Language Teaching, webinar. And it's a series of virtual meetings to replace the annual Real Life Tech Conference, which was founded by Joe Dale many years ago and which is now held yearly at the Ashcombe School. Um, this year it was going to be generously sponsored by the wonderful Stéphane de Rhone, Stéphane de Rhone and his team at Linguascope. And this webinar is entitled Remote Learning with Video. Our presenter is Heike Philp. And this, as you can see in front of us, is the outline of the session that we're going to have. And here is, I'm about to pass over to Heike. Heike is a great friend of AWL London. She helped us to set up our first webinars way back in 2011. And I've just, I've counted it. We're actually, this is our 46th today. So thank you ever so much to you, Heike. We're absolutely delighted that you've agreed to present today. And now I'm going to stop my screen share so that we can go over to you. Thank you so much, Helen. I'm really delighted to be here. And I'm delighted that 67 people think, you know, this is a, a great time to spend the evening because tomorrow is Easter or Good Friday. And uh, yeah, but we have nothing more to do than to sit at home, don't we? So thank you very much. I'm going to start the presentation. And, uh, so. This Ah, but no, it's not. It's not yet here with you. Okay, we'll have to mute a couple of people here. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to start the presentation. And uh, um, today's session will be, uh, we'll have a little bit of um, three kind of different phases of things of, of a session. First of all, I'll talk a little bit about uh, using video conferencing with specific emphasis emphasis on uh, using the video and using the video is uh, still something that some of us don't like too much uh, some of us feel we could do without it uh, some of us um, feel like well I it's just me on the webcam I don't see anybody else so that's kind of boring yeah <laughs> and I feel a little bit on the spotlight yeah and it's so annoying to see myself in the mirror all the day all, all the time and uh, like Isabel she's wonderful to join me <laughs> she wants to sh show herself on the webcam my, my Gadi as well very nice to meet you both <laughs> so and uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, first consider webcams and video conferencing as a whole um, only about five minutes then we want to go and discuss in breakout rooms um, the topic, well, if we don't see our students, and mostly it's like this, uh, it's just us on the webcam or video, and the students we don't see. And uh, could, could you please mute, or could anybody of the co-hosts mute people who are, who are on webcam? Sorry, Isabella, I have to mute you as well, then perhaps. And um, um, what, what can we do with our students? That would be the, the sort of the discussion point. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, great. Um, and then after the discussion, we come back together. And then we'll also look at some of the great affordances of using video conferencing. Yeah, and something that excites me. So first of all, if uh, anybody asks you <laughs> to use your video, then this is possibly, this is the kind of reaction that you have. And please don't take it too serious. I'm, I'm sometimes a bit of a fun, you know, d doing some fun stuff really. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's more fun, yeah. Um, then what we have is uh, the video. The one beautiful thing about the video is that we can smile at each other and smile is the shortest distance between two people, as you know. Um, we often have this situation that we have like um, huge headsets on our head and we look like pilots, yeah? So 
It's like like Helen. Yeah, she's got her headset here. <laughs> and uh, uh, the question is, do we need those? I mean, um, uh, obviously not not ex as exaggerated. And my findings are that these days the built-in microphones are so wonderful. I'm actually using a built-in microphone right now. I hope. I mean, you must tell me: is the audio okay? Is it clear enough? Um, obviously, you have to have a quiet surrounding when you use a built-in microphone, and it only is warrants a headset. Audio is okay. Thank you, Mag Magali, that you're uh, giving me this feedback. Wonderful. So um, then, what we have is we have this, you know, this this very personal and private situation to be seen at home, and uh, we have. Um, Sorry, I have to do that. So um, we have to um, um, we have to also be be aware that this is our private lives come into this, yeah. And I every so often I had my headset on and then I walk and talk to my mother and and sometimes I'm not, you know, I was. Uh, it, it is funny, yes. It's, you feel very old fashioned now, Helen with a headset <laughs> now but the situation is that so many laptops really have a really really cool built-in microphone these days and i encourage them because most headphones that they then try to use are the ones that fit into a mobile phone not necessarily fit into a laptop but these are the technicalities i just wanted to show you it can be a wonderful impression to have everybody also showing their pets their kids their home their 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 beloved sort of environment yeah it is very very intimate sometimes a little bit too intimate so sometimes you have to be aware of looking professional enough yeah uh, what i love about video conferencing is you never seem to be looking too old i mean i've i've seen my days as well and i get gray hair already so but i, I never feel too old and besides uh, there's a little something in uh, Zoom that ha it says, touch up my video. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you. And uh, of course, good light is important. Yeah, you might, you might see that um, sometimes there's, I mean, we see it with Sarah's <laughs> impression. If the light comes from the back, her face is very much in the shadow. And it's always the issue at night. I mean, during the day, we're all fine, but at night we want some good lighting. And what I particularly don't like too much is when the light shines too much in, in the glasses, yeah? So I position some, it's only a standing light, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a cool one. So just as an inspiration, I've also seen people smoking. I don't know how you feel about this when you see people smoking and eating and drinking wine and everything. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like, oh, why don't you switch off the webcam? So, and the background obviously is important. We have in Zoom a couple of funny things that you can change the virtual background, which is not terribly, terribly perfect. I'll show you that in a minute later. So, but what we want to do is, this was just a kind of a little bit of a fun um, setting into what we want to discuss. And the one thing is, as I said, I'm on webcam, but I do not see my students. And a little bit similar, it is for when I present and I don't see the people. <laughs> what do I do? And uh, I think you're all really, really creative um, educators, language educators. I don't know. Are you, are you language educators? Do you work in a school? Do you, do you want to give uh, that briefly in uh, the text that Rachel says? Yes, fantastic. Um, you're a language teacher, Magali. And um, if I pronounce that correctly, yes, secondary teacher. Yes, yes, yes. So you are teachers. You're very creative. Have you wondered sometimes about this? That um, uh, do you actually use webcam teaching life online, or do you uh, avoid that subject teaching life online and rather give the students some homework? And <laughs> I mean, what's your situation? Do you actually teach you just using video conferencing? 
is that subject also that interests you, you know, what, how to go about it? Oh, the answers are coming in so fast. I cannot. <laughs> You're just starting, Sarah. Excellent. You, you were using Flipgrid before. Fantastic. Spanish teacher enjoying teaching online and learning more about it. Awesome. Yes, the answers, but not always with camera on. So, Sylvie, there's a good one for you. You're interested, but you haven't tried it yet. And Karin says she's excited about teaching online. Oh, that's lovely to hear, Karin. Madhu hasn't started online as of yet. And Elisabetta says not often with my video. Well, it could be that you're using other means, but is, is, uh, is the shyness of going on webcam, is that a little bit also what, what, and the fact that you don't see the students, is that a bit of an issue or problem for you? Yeah, Google Hangouts are also encouraging. Uh, we're not allowed to see our students, Sylvie says. I hesitate to show them my house. Oh, very good, Natalie. I totally appreciate that one. It's difficult to get feedback. So this is why we want to get together in the breakout room, if that's okay. What do you think? Is 10 minutes enough to discuss that a little bit? Have you ever tried breakout groups in Zoom? Then I'll just show you briefly what they look like for me as a, uh, an organizer. Look, I can assign now participants into, well, I'll just say how many rooms. And since we are, I don't know how many participants are we, like 672. So if I put you 72 people into Let's say seven rooms, eight rooms, nine rooms. What do you think? How about 10 rooms? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you try, Chris says he tries to find an impersonal area for background. Very good one. In MS Teams, there aren't any breakouts. And this is why we want to try them out a little bit. 10 minutes is a long time, you think? Okay, let's wait. So I'm going to create the breakouts and what it will look like just briefly to show you, um, I can move everyone into the breakout rooms automatically. That's fairly quickly done. Some will stay in the main room, but, um, and then I will give you after say eight minutes, I'll tell you in two minutes we stop and then you get a countdown timer 60 seconds before you come back into the room. Just remember when you come back, to mute your microphones because you will all have your microphones open maybe and then we'll have a nice bit of a, a chaos yeah uh, you have a little pronunciation defect and it's annoying for you okay I go okay interesting so I'll stop sharing I'll start the breakouts <laughs> which we haven't got here <laughs> okay no breakouts <laughs> Um, um, Helen, that's something you switch on in the settings. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I really am. <laughs> Can <laughs> I do? Okay. I can't do that now. Then is it too late no. to do it now? All oh, right. Uh, well, you could maybe, maybe does it. But as far as I know, we have to close the room and start. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't look. Never mind. We My can fault. discuss it here. We mm -hmm. we are very good with the text chat. <laughs> so. Um, this is the challenge, yeah? Um, I'm sorry, but no breakouts. That means if you want to express yourself, uh, put yourself into the text, uh, add your, your thoughts in the text chat. You can also use audio. No worries. What can you do to find out? This was the challenging question. What can you do to find out? So, oh, saying, okay, I'm on webcam but I do not see my students, how can I make sure they are attentive? And what kind of activities can we do, can be done to gauge whether they are engaged? <laughs> yeah, so we'll discuss, we'll discuss that now in, not the, in the biggest breakout ever. <laughs> Q&A, okay. Google Forms, okay. 
the chat seems to suggest that lots are very engaged. That's true, Anne, yeah, uh, with 68 participants, true. So what I'll even do is I'll make the chat wider, which is absolutely wonderful that you can do that. In uh, Zoom, you can, with a side-by-side -side view, you can extend. So, Mentimeter questions, Joe Dale says. And raise hand. That's very good. I find sometimes there is no hand. I don't know. <laughs> the, the iPod users and the iPhone users, they seem to have a hand, but we Windows users we don't get a hand in, in the controls. We can do yes and no. How do you, who, who can raise hand? I can do yes or no, but there's no raise hand for me. So interactive quiz, Quizlet Live. So I'm going a little bit up because I missed quite a few at the beginning. Interact, engaging and interacting activities, Kahoot and GimKit. Oh, fantastic. Very good suggestions. What did you do? Yeah. Nato, do you wanna, do you wanna share some thoughts on uh, what to do with students when you don't see them? Yeah. Okay, Gumma is in a great situation. She can see them. Uh, if no raise, we could thumbs up. Okay. Michael says the thumbs up. The thumbs up is uh, appears in the webcam image only. Uh, of course, yes, that's that's the thing. <laughs> Triptycho. Here we have fantastic tools. You can raise hands, fantastic. Let me see how many raise hands. Yes, for some reason, I think that's that's um, an iPhone and iPad feature. I'm not sure. So uh, Chiara says, ask individual questions to be answered with the mics while asking the others to answer in the chat. So please do that, Chiara, come on stage. Please take the microphone. And whilst you are talking, the others can type in the text chat. Okay, good evening, everybody. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite difficult to get people to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, especially if you I don't know what to say. Maybe you haven't you have a question for me to answer? Well, the question is: do you teach using your webcam? If so, do you see your students in the webcam as well? Uh, no, not usually. Usually students don't like to be seen in the webcam. I, Here well. we go. Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> so I always ask them, maybe do you want to show your face and say something to the other, just say hello, but they just do it for a short time and then they go back in the black. So how do you make sure they're engaged? How do you make sure they're attentive? How do you make sure that they don't play video games because you're not watching them? That's a, that's exactly my problems. Uh, that's why I said I I can't get feedback from them. Well, I can't. It's difficult to have feedback. Uh, well, I try to ask questions. Just well, asking somebody to answer with the microphones, and the others are typing in the chat. Or I try and play games where they have to ask uh, questions to each other. I'm quite new to the online teaching, so I don't know a lot, many tools. So I just try to do what well what, what is possible for me with my tools right? they are very little anyway but or i for example if somebody is making a presentation uh at times i stop the one speaking and i ask questions to the other to see if they are listening and well most of the time they are so it's good i think mm -hmm. <laughs> and next we want to hear from a Piniki, because you have primary school kids and they love it. What do they love? Do Hello. they love to show their webcams, really? Hello. I, I, I think I haven't um, uh, started teaching yet, but I see my daughter who is in the same school. And uh, the primary children, they love to be uh, on the screen. So they love to see their friends. Uh, I'm just worried, you know, whether they can be um, focused for a long time. Uh, this is one of my concerns. So I think we need to have different activities so that they can be on task all the time. 
Yeah, but they like it very much. Fantastic. Uh, I also found that the young ones are not so shy that we think. Um, also students in uh, universities, they kind of like to show off. I don't know, they're more used to the selfie type of thing. I think we're a little bit, we, we older folks are shyer on the webcam. <laughs> no? Yes, Am yes, I wrong? Yes, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's an assumption. It's not said. So we have a fantastic question by Cheryl, who says, because of screen grab technology, that's like, you know. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Can you turn it? So you need to, I had to mute you a little bit. You were talking to somebody else. How about um, Cheryl, uh, would you like to grab the microphone? You, you completely right there. The um, screenshot technology. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's, yeah. Then you, so then we've you've had, been posted on, on the web, you know. Yeah, okay. so we've, we've had incidents in our school with live video where students have secretly filmed teachers and then put it up on TikTok. Um, so I'm just thinking with um, screen, screen grab, so I can grab part of this video as it is recorded here and mm -hmm. use it in my own devices, likewise with the students. So I'm just worried about the safeguarding issues for students, which is part of the reason why our school has uh, a policy against um, the use of, um, of video and things like Microsoft Teams, et cetera, when mm -hmm. it comes to dealing with the students. Yeah. So I was just wondering if there's anything to guard against that, but Joe has said that there is, there's no anti-screen grab technology that can be employed. Absolutely, there's nothing that uh, you can st uh, to stop that. But it's, it's a good policy then, do you think, that the students shouldn't be on webcam? And then if that is, and to, to be true, this is the, the majority of policies out there for safeguarding the students, and also uh, data protection reasons, students shouldn't be on webcam. But what can we do then to attract their attention? Yeah, that, that is, the, that is the, the issue. What can we do? And I guess for each school, it's different. But if we've got a, a major culture and problem of bullying using um, technology and using cameras in, in the particular school, I think it's the right choice for mm -hmm. our school. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know what the answer to uh, to that is, particularly for ensuring that all are engaged and not signed in and playing on their phones or, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Mm -hmm. We're also having a little discussion in the text chat about um, somebody, actually like the schools or the trade unions uh, saying as uh, restricting the use or allowing the use, whatever it is. Um, there's a couple of policies around, but as a, back to the to the issue, even if we don't show ourselves, which could also be um, teaching life online without the webcam, I, I think it would be difficult for students, but it can be done. I mean, absolutely can be done. And the thing is, should you then focus, instead of actually focus on the conversation, because right now we're making a dialogue, even though some of you don't, uh, use the microphone, but you're sharing your thoughts in the text chat. And for me, that's the same kind of thing, whether you're texting or whether you're voicing, um, you're sharing your thoughts. And I really find it very interesting to also, I found that the text chats actually become less when somebody's talking, right? Because multitask, you know, multimodal, but that's what's called a multimodal environment. Texting, listening, hearing, da, da, da. okay. But if we manage that, yeah, and if we manage to talk to our students, even if they're texting, um, or would you like them to voice? Is that, I mean, we are language educators mostly. We want them to talk. Are they shy talking? Are they shyer talking with a webcam? Are they more, you know, wanting to talk when they're not on webcam. What's your experience?
A friend has to use the videos as a big mess in a class. I have seen mess as well with many webcams. It's very, well, some are eating, some are getting up, and then somebody else looks into the webcam. And it's quite lively, to say the least. You, Natalie says the ideal world would be to have a great conversation. My concern is the above how to control when. And Mag Magali is, if I pronounce this correctly, Magali Guillaume. So it, Ma Magali. A friend has to use the video and it's a mess with a big. Oh, okay, we, we have that. Interested to talk at the beginning of the session. Yeah, interesting. Why not switch them on at the beginning and then switch them off? That's a cool one. <clears throat> yes, Elpiniki El says she feels that showing the face creates a closer relationship with pupils and it's exhausting. What is exhausting? Uh, exhausting is many webcams, it's exhausting. Oh, oh, cool, interesting. Well, with one to one, like Sarah has, she says it's much easier with a webcam, definitely. Would you, in the one to one setting, would you always use webcams, everyone? And Sylvie says they participate well even without the webcam. And Michael says he likes the sound of the middle ground audio only Zoom for synchronous learning. You might have to grab the microphone here, Michael, to explain a little bit your experience. I have a feeling that you are experienced <laughs> for some reason. Well, uh, um, yes, thank you. Hi, my experience was at the end of last term, we had four days of remote learning after everyone had been sent home. And we were working on Google Classroom uh, roughly with children following the school timetable. So in a, they should have been there present on Google Classroom in the chat. But because we weren't allowed to use Zoom, I found it very hard to establish what I felt was a connection with them uh, just using you know, a text stream in Google Classroom. And I feel that I want more, yet the school won't allow Zoom. I think mm -hmm. perhaps they might go for it audio only because it's less of a safeguarding worry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good point, Michael. So an, an, a synchronous text chat on something like Google Classroom was the alternative that the school allowed. Mm -hmm. Yes, which obviously uh, disadvantages children who find it hard to type very fast, to read very fast. It works well for us quick typists, but not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, do you find I mean, that's the thing. We, we want them to express themselves, even in a foreign language, right? So text could be an opportunity for some. Uh, it could, but it could be a restriction for others who are not so fast typers. What do you think? Would, are people more, relax, more willing to type something in a text chat? Maybe they're willing, but we're language teachers. So I, I, what I really want is, is, is the way to indeed for us to be spontaneously communicating. And I feel as if that's got to be speaking and listening first and, and text second. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I like Chiara's um, approach of showing webcams at the beginning and webcams at the end. What do you think? Is that a good approach as well? Well, if, you, if you're not allowed to, obviously not. Yeah, I feel I should hand that over, over to someone else. Actually, Michael, you've been asked to talk more about Google Classroom. <laughs> well, or, or Joe. I mean, the guru is Joe, but you, Michael, if you have the experience, if that's okay. Um, I feel we're halfway there. I, I think it's great for those of us who've got Google Classroom. I'm looking forward perhaps to being able to use Google Meet, which sounds to me a bit like a second grade, second rate Zoom. Joe will have a clearer picture of that. Um, no, I'm, I, 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 can I leave Joe to answer the, the Google Classroom questions? Sure. Uh, no problem. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, I've just noticed on um, Twitter in the last Do, couple of do you days. Do you want to go that, on webcam, Joe? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 
There we are. There we are. Right. Um, I've there noticed um, on uh, on Twitter, uh, I think today or yesterday, that um, Google are going to be combining Google Meet within Google Classroom. So I don't know if that will be an option that you can then turn off or if it's going to be there automatically or what have you. But um, if you like the idea of using video conferencing within Google Meet in Google Classroom, then that's brilliant news. Um, if not, then you'd have to ask the person in charge of G Suite at your school to turn that facility off. But I think um, that's that's an interesting uh, new feature. And it's also interesting that in Microsoft Teams, they've announced today that it's now possible to close the room completely for everybody. Because before, if the teacher had left before had left first, the students could carry on in the room. Or I think I'm right in saying click on the link and go back to the room even if the teacher's left it, whereas now they've made it like a forced end to session, which is um, good news. So it's nice to see these big companies responding quickly to make updates to um, to the software. But um, yeah, essentially Google Classroom, it's like a learning management system. Lots of teachers really like it because there's only three buttons on the screen at any one time. And uh, people that use it seem to really like it. I mean, what do people think in the chat if they're using Google Classroom? Do you like it or...? How do you find um, it? I loved it. Mm. We did a session with it. Absolutely loved it. It's so beautiful and easy. Easy to use, easy to navigate, easy to find out. And and very first... user friendly, absolutely. Yeah. When it first came out, you had to be a G Suite school to use it. And then they made mm. it possible for anybody with a personal account to have a Google Classroom as well. So you could use it for things like courses and workshops as well. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's that's enough for me awesome. for tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, um, we want to go back because we're like, um, that would have been obviously the time to come back out of breakout rooms. And I'm sorry, we couldn't give you this experience. We'll catch up on this one. And the 23rd, as Helen announced, 23rd of April with Darren White is all about Google Meet. So I have a webinar there. And I'm really excited because MS Teams was the subject of the last two webinars go back to the recording, so fantastic. Yeah, and we had a, another beautiful, interesting uh, comment from, I can't remember who it was. Instead of sharing webcams, how about sharing screens? Now there's something about Google, oh, sorry, Zoom. There's something about Zoom that you can allow people, um, multiple participants to share the screen. Now, let me see. Okay, to share simultaneously. What you can do, and please, uh, it's a little experiment. <laughs> um, could perhaps five of you, but raise your hand if you wanted to, five of you start uh, sharing, screen sharing here in, in, yeah? Sure, thanks. Uh, it's my, my, my mistake, Helen. So, um, could you, could five of you, okay, that's Michael, that's Isa, Madhu, okay, could you each start, share your screen and select the whiteboard? I'm Don't, sorry, Heike, I think that we've disabled everybody share, sharing their screen. Well, I've just enabled it. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Multiple participants can share simultaneously and I would like them to actually share simultaneously. So Madhu, if you could start, click on the screen button at the bottom of the screen and say, share your screen, but choose the whiteboard if you can and start scribbling a little bit on the whiteboard. Very cool. Now, Michael, you do the same. And Isa, if I'm, you could do that. I'm not seeing the whiteboard. I've, I could plug in an iPad or an iPhone, but I'm not seeing the whiteboard option. Well, then you share just anything. That's okay. And Isa as well. Can you also share, if possible, a whiteboard? And I will do the fourth one. And what you can do now, everyone, try and um, select on a, that's at the top where the green, where it says like you're viewing Madhus. Um, as soon as Michael has started sharing his screen, you will see an option. Okay, view options. And if you click on that drop down, shared screens is Elisabetta. So I can click on Elisabetta. She's sharing. Zoom, okay, <laughs> same like Isa. Um, Isa is sharing a Google, a Word document, fantastic. Um, Madhu is sharing, again, Zoom. Can you share a website, Madhu, so we see the difference a little bit? Any website you want to share? 
in the Eventbrite link should do, <laughs> so that we can see that we can actually have three students, maybe four, five students all share the screen and we can hop from one to the other. So right now I'm looking at Madhus who's got a beautiful valley in front of her with add some trackers of some sort. I'm looking at Elisabetta. Oh yes, start, start off. We're going to try and crash the system. Elisabetta is still looking at Zoom. Isa is looking at her Word document. Bonjour, je m'appelle Isa. Very good. And Michael Wright has started sharing a MacBook note. He's typing. I'm not sure you can read this. I'm typing some words. Cool. That is working. Isn't that cool? Isn't that brilliant? So several people can share the screen and you can watch them. <laughs> it's a Zoom only feature, yes. <laughs> it is awesome, I find. <laughs> so we're, we're looking at Michael's um, bottom of a white sheet at the moment. Um, Isa is still sharing her Word document. The others have stopped. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure whether you can do that with Teams as well. So allow me to take over now again, because we only have 20 more minutes, 15 minutes. And I would like to show you what I'm excited about, video conferencing. <laughs> so... Sadly, the breakouts we can skip. <laughs> so, okay. Um, uh, yes, there's a lot that excites me about video conferencing. I would like to share something, um, if I may. So, the multiple users can screen share. I think that's a really, really cool feature. Um, annotation by participants. Now, I was so impressed by those of Microsoft Teams being able to use, many of them have a Mac, yeah, being able to use the digital pen. So, but I have only a laptop that doesn't allow me to, there's no touch screen of that laptop, yeah. But what I can do, and that is really cool, if annotations are enabled, not sure. Ah, oh, hopefully they are. Ah, oh, again, <laughs> the room settings. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm so used to my own rooms. Okay, what I could do, I just demonstrated to you. I'm also logged into the same meeting with my iPad and I can use my digital pen to write on it. That is if annotations are enabled for participants. <laughs> okay, next time we'll demonstrate that. Computer sound for videos. I find that most encouraging that we can switch on to share the computer sound, especially with audio files for language learning, videos that we want to watch, etc. There is also a feature optimizing video performance. And that means that when you have full screen video running on a very high resolution, sometimes also very fast videos, then that uh, check marked um, in the settings, obviously of screen sharing, um, then you can uh, see that beautifully clear how we found it. It's amazing performance. Um, we've had, I mean, I've been using Zoom for a year. I've just introduced 190 lecturers of a university to use 55 Zoom rooms <laughs> this week. <laughs> I've had uh, many, many students um, uh, join this, this room. I do a lot of webinar support. So I, I work for universities and have them with their lecturers. Lecturers, sometimes lecturers need more help than the students. So, um, but we found that it always works. Honestly, it always works. It's very, very rare that somebody doesn't get Zoom to work. And even if they don't have installation rights, then there's a browser-based version of Zoom that opens up instead. Uh, you know, in some companies, you can't install a piece of software. So some more things, cool things about Zoom. Yeah, touch up my experience. I've, I've mentioned that. It's a video setting. Closed caption. I can do closed captions if that is enabled. Helen in the room <laughs> wanted to demonstrate it, how beautiful that can be for language learning. 
Um, enter and exit chimes. Now I have Zoom rooms open every so often the whole day so that people can drop in if they have issues, what have you. It makes a little ding dong. And I always uh, missed that one with Adobe Connect. I was never sure when somebody came in Adobe Connect. But Zoom, the ding dong, fantastic. Yeah. So now I want to show you another couple of really exciting features I find. Um, you can, I've, I've taken that screenshot earlier, but look at this screenshot in comparison. So we have, here we have the active web webcams. And here, this is the setting, hide non-video participants. You can do that, but if you don't, if you don't check mark that one, it looks like this. And why did you say, well, what's the point? Um, it is very, very difficult in a video conference with a couple of people on webcam to notice those that don't have a webcam. Yeah? And, and this way I can see who's there. And I'm, I'm addressing Michael Cormack and Hazel Wilson and B. Bennett because I feel like I noticed them. Sorry, I've not been watching the text chat just the last couple of minutes as I'm presenting. Hold your comments uh, yeah, for a moment and then uh, later on we'll start discussion again. There's a couple of more things that really, really excite me about Zoom. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, this is the breakout rooms. I'll go through that in a hurry because I wanted to show you how to move people into breakouts uh, if you want to allocate them to specific rooms. So I make them rename their names <laughs> so and to add the room number that they want or the group number or whatever. It's very easy. So what excites me more about Zoom or about video conferencing, the fact is that you can, it's global thing, and then you can do simulcast. Simulcast means there's a local event. So here are the students in the middle. They're there they're, they're locally. And this Chinese student and that person from Iran and that person from India, these three could not attend in person. So in order to include them in the welcome ceremony of that university, a simulcast was staged. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful, a way of using video conferencing to use it across, you know, uh, offline and online. Expert at a distance, I don't have to say more, that everybody knows that expert who I'm with. And he can share his uh, iPad, his iPhone, I think that's awesome. A window into different virtual environments. We've had just uh, spend a session in a big workshop in January, February, with 150 participants, and we went to visit various 3D solutions in order to find out which ones would suit language teaching and learning. So, but if you want to go into World of Warcraft and Fortnite and OpenSim and Second Life and uh, Immerse Online and Verbila, and we went into 13 different solutions, uh, we wanted to. <laughs> I mean, we found experts who would explain us the solution, but they did. We all met in Zoom and they shared their screen. And then we looked into this virtual world. And all we wanted to know was to find out whether that's good enough for, like, for our efforts to actually enter that. I mean, does it warrant the time and effort to enter it? Yeah, it worked beautifully. I also found that this is an entry to uh, 3D environments. I mean, last time uh, we were here in <laughs> presenting. Which ones would you recommend? What, what, what do you want to know, Sylvie? So, and uh, I'm at the end of my session. I'm happy to continue discussion, discussion a little bit about the, um, <laughs> about the beautiful things about using uh, Zoom video conferencing. I mean, I've been using them since 2001 and I can't get tired of it. What do you think? Because I think it's still, um, to me, this corona crisis, although it's meant a lot more work for me, obviously, I find that such a beautiful opportunity for so many kids out there to finally be taught online, be able to Google, uh, you know, at the same time as they're learning. Um, to experience uh, 
distance learning in, in many respects. I find it such an opportunity for uh, lecturers who kept saying, oh, you know, the brick and mortar, you know, university and, and sitting like the students sitting in front of me, that's my world. And if suddenly they're gone and they go like, hey, the four hours have passed so quickly. I had really, really fantastic feedback this week. Um, the virtual world, Beatrice. I'm, I'm happy to share that link. We, we evaluated 13 different, we came up to discussing 18 different solutions and we voted for our top five. So it's a beautiful result of that one. Happy to share that. Later on, Beatrice, after the session. <laughs> so um, we're nearing the top of the hour. Do you still want to, I mean, <laughs> even though we didn't do breakouts, we didn't do polls, we didn't do, um, that's okay, it was good. Yeah, hi, Kerr. I don't know if it makes any difference, but I've gone onto my other computer and I have set up another meeting which has clicked enable for breakout and whiteboards. That would perhaps... be nine o'clock, yeah. Yeah, could do if you want, or we well, could just say, we well, let's do that another all... time. Yeah. We would have to move all, and it's, yeah. it would have to be that we would have to have the 10 minutes of the breakout time plus the time afterwards. So mm -hmm. unless we'll another people time. Are, <laughs> are prepared to spend another 20, 30 minutes, I'm happy to do it, but um, it's late. <laughs> I think what we might do is perhaps for another webinar that we have, we'll just do it very quickly just to give people experience because it's partly just to know what happens not necessarily to have the breakout, but just to experience what it's like. Experience it, that yeah. would have been. So it doesn't bit. have to take 10 minutes. So we might perhaps do that for another webinar just at the beginning or the end for a bit of fun. So, and uh, what I would like you to do, if you could share this on Twitter, I don't know how you actually feedback to Helen, your experience in, in doing that is if you're experimenting now with things that you've never done before due to what you've heard at uh, All London, at Tilt, at the sessions, let us know how it worked. That would be awesome. Well, yes, and, and Joe, please put your video on as well and join in on this really so that we can thank you. Um, first of all, before, well, no, actually first, first, let's talk about how you can feedback. Um, Joe, how do we normally feedback how we've experienced things and what, how we put things into practice? Well, normally on normally on Twitter, um, or on occasionally on comments on um, the different Facebook groups where I post the new Tilt webinars. But it, well, it might be an idea to have a Facebook page or a group, but then that's another group for people to join, and then yeah. someone has to manage that. So I think I think it, Twitter seems to Twitter seems to be the main way in which it's people a good are. One giving feedback and if we if we all use the um the dedicated hashtag tilt webinar um oh, is it tilt, be... tilt webinar or tilt webinars i wasn't sure well i, I don't think that I th well I, i've been using we tilt webinar to... without the s but it doesn't really i think either I suppose either if we or... decide on it so we definitely all yeah. know what it is well i've, I've been I mean, using tilt webinar without the s tilt webinar so if we say tilt webinar msl twitter right i mean the other thing that we had discussed was we thought um possibly on the 25th of April, which is when we were meant to be having our real life technology conference, we could have a show and tell. And at that point, it would be everybody coming here and really open mic and open video to say, tell us what sort of things from what you've been learning, from what you've been nice. doing, what worked for you, because already that's happening, that people are learning very, very quickly. And it's lovely then, for, especially for the presenters, to see, ah, oh, because of what you told me, because of what you did, this is how we put it into practice. So that would be a very tangible way of doing it, really, on the 25th of April. Mm -hmm. um, but it tends to be high. I think it's mainly that people on Twitter will just say, thank you, and this is how I've used it, and share. Um, and using Joe Dale's um, MFL Twitter art I hashtag as well. That's a very, very popular one. But the other thing we could do, of course, is that we've got everybody's email address here through this event, we could send you a, a form, whether a Google form or a Microsoft one, and ask people to fill that in as well, perhaps, and find out. Is there anything in particular you'd like as feedback, Heike? How would you normally do it? The feedback? Oh, good question. <laughs> I just wondered if there was a particular way. 
Well, we, we could have a Google form at the end of the session, I suppose, mm -hmm. if, if, if we want to make it formal in that way or yeah. do it more organically on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah, I don't know if people would like to fill in a Google form, then yeah, mm -hmm. we could certainly do that. But I, it probably is going to be a little bit down the line from because at the moment, a lot of people are just gathering ideas. Mm. We're not with our classes for another week mm -hmm. or so. So it'll be gradually. And then I think people will try things out and ex really exchange as to what worked. Mm -hmm. So I think as it's... I think I think the the easiest thing would be perhaps yeah if you try something out and you find it works and you have some great creative ideas and believe you you do because a lot of people are experimenting at the moment send an email to Helen and tell her about it <laughs> in a short and then next time she will read that short experience from you mm. <laughs> out loud <laughs> well yes we could, we'll set something up because certainly <laughs> through, the whole point of people registering through eventbrite is that we've they've got you people have got a way of communicating so we'll we'll set something up but since it is now nine o'clock i'd like to say on behalf of everybody here thank you so much to hiker um, really for opening our eyes to ways in which we could use video. We're all in we're all in very different circumstances, aren't we? As we could see from the chat, some people are using it, some people aren't. And I think whatever situation we're in, we'll have learned something today. I have certainly learned that I should ask the person who's going to present beforehand which buttons I have to press. <laughs> because clearly I hadn't pressed and so for anyone who's got a Zoom account, I can tell you now because I've looked at it, you look under the account and it's under advanced settings and it's there where you can allow the breakout, where I you can allow the host to do it, where you can Sorry, allow please. whiteboard. So we'll definitely put that on for next time and we'll have a little play with that, if that's okay. So if everybody would like to open their mics now, perhaps, or their videos if you want to, just to applaud Heike so that she can see that we're still here and say thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Really, really good. And I'll I'll turn off the um Gary. <laughs> awesome. So I'll be stopping the recording now and then I know there were a couple of people who wanted some some more questions. So I shall pause stop the recording now. The informal